Hey, welcome to Caching in the Northwest. You know this is the podcast from the birthplace of geocaching right here in the great Pacific Northwest. Now, it's Thursday night at 9 p.m. Pacific. I'm Chris of the Northwest, and we're going to talk about geocaches and geocachers from here and all around the world. So while your windshield wipers can't go fast enough for you to see out the windshield, Hmm. we'll be caching in the Northwest. I've had that problem. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they just go really fast because it's all ice, but that's different. Ice, ice, baby. Oh, yeah. Hey, well, tonight we're talking with Marcy. Welcome, Marcy. All about visiting and exploring Veilmount, B.C. As always, live audience, jump in the chat. You're already getting started. I don't know why I have to ask because you're always ahead of me there, but find out all you want to know about Veilmount, B.C. and what Marcy has to share tonight. I'm excited to learn, but first, it's time to bring in our pocket primate. Some say his only number one hit was recorded on 8-track tape. Others say he wrote the book, Why Is Daddy Always Napping? All we know is he's called Land Monkey. Man. Did, did you write the book or were you the subject of the book? A, a little bit of both. It's, okay. a, it's an autobiographical <laughs> novel. And uh, I'm just... It, it really feels like you've been spying on me through my microwave oven lately. Mm, oh. Well. Refrigerate. I was going to say, uh, it's, it's not the microwave. <laughs> we won't tell you where it is, but it's not the microwave. It's not the microwave. See you. <laughs> uh, good to be back here. Good to be back on a Thursday night with uh, with my podcast buddies and everybody in the chat. Good to see everybody in there and already interacting with us. I, I love that. They sure are. And great to have Marcy back with us in a whole new sphere of influence. <laughs> thank you uh, all right um so before we get into all the stuff we're going to get into a quick reminder first that we appreciate the support of our patrons who help to keep the podcast coming each and every week thanks to land sharks one of our corporate denali level sponsors so much to check out online in the land sharks.ca that's l-a-n-d S-H-A-R-K-Z dot C-A store online. Pick up some products, check them out, and they'll be delivered before you know it. Well, maybe not before you know, but they'll, they'll get delivered. And if you uh, are interested in our other corporate level sponsor, well, that would be Gold Country Geotourism. Now, Marcy, this isn't you. <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, just calm down for a moment. <laughs> Uh, inside joke for those who maybe know that Marcy used to represent Gold Country, and now we have some other wonderful people representing Gold Country. So check them out. ExploreGoldCountry.com. Check out the geo tours. Check out the region. There's plenty to explore and plenty of adventures to be had in Gold Country. So again, on Facebook, Explore Gold Country, or hey, just online at the website, and don't forget to download the app. Because if I have to tell you again, I'm turning this podcast around. All right. You'll do it. (laughs) I've done it before. (laughs) All right. Hey, and folks, if you want to know more about supporting this podcast, click that Patreon link in the cachingnw.com website. And with that, it's time for the glow. You may ask, what is a glow? What is you may glow? not ask what is a glow. <laughs> I was waiting for Jim. Well, he said I may. And so uh-huh. since given the option, I said, nah, maybe I won't this week. Hey, Chris, so, what is a glow? Hey. <laughs> I love Marcy. Marcy, will you come on every week? Yes, I would. <laughs> okay. Marcy, the glow is the geocaching log of the week. Oh, look, we have people answering too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, GSM times two. Whether you read it or whether you wrote it, we want to hear about it because great logs simply make geocaching better. You can send an email or a recording to feedback at cachingnw.com. Of course, you can call into 253-693-TFTC and show us just how you glow. And we need your glows. Please send them in. We do indeed. Let's see. This glow, well, it looks rather short, doesn't it? GC2 X-ray echo 
Beta Alpha. How about that? Vale Mount well, Museum well, History Tour 09. Vale Mount. That's got a familiar ring to it. Okay. It's called Take the Train Traditional Geocache. GC2X EBA. And it says, on our way to Edmonton to return GeoGuider 565 home after spending a weekend in Abbotsford attending Geo Woodstock. Uh, GG565 had already found this one on a previous visit. It's a fantastic place. This spot would make a perfect Adventure Lab location. Hint, hint. <laughs> I like that. Very nice. That was uh, so nice and go. short and to the point. Yeah. You know, I think this... This, again, though, goes back to, Chris, what you try and encourage with the whole concept mm -hmm. of the glow, which is it doesn't have to be long. No. Um, you know, if there is a funny story, we always enjoy them and appreciate them. But, you know, something more than a TFTC. And uh, uh, Marcy, you shared this one with us. Um, maybe it's a good opportunity to, to share with our listeners why uh, a, a log that's more than a TFTC is valuable, blah, blah, valuable to someone in a, a role such as yours. Uh, thank you very much. Um, so when people mention things like this, the, the key things that I'm looking for when I'm looking at these, I love to see where they're coming from, where they're going. Um, showing that they were at Geo Woodstock is really cool as well. Mm -hmm. And then also knowing that they're coming with people. And this particular um, geocache location, like they're giving a nice little hint so to speak, without spilling the whole thing. Um, this location is actually a really cool location. There's some pretty neat things to see there. And uh, this is also part of the um, geo tour that I'll be talking about later as well. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Teaser. A geo tour. <laughs> uh, well, you know what? As much as I want to do that, we can't talk about it just yet. Hold um, that thought. We'll be back. <laughs> oh, and she's got shiny bits. Shiny, oh, I got shiny things. <laughs> hey, folks! If you want to join in the conversation tonight, use the hashtag Vale Mount. Uh, there it is. I knew we had a. a uh, There's so much content in the chat already; it's hard to find. <laughs> I launched it quickly. <laughs> yeah. So use the hashtag Veil Mount, and, and our chat lackey will be quite particular. If you don't spell it right, he may or may not include it. <laughs> of course, if you have a question or comment for the Caching in the Northwest team, use the hashtag FATAS. That's for the after show, and we'll bring that up in, well, you, I think I spilled the beans on that one, too, in the mm -hmm. after show. Yeah, yeah, it, I, I led with that. Yeah, we don't of care course, how you spell that one. A task? No. Yeah. Spell it any way you want. Uh, of course, you can also use podcast baking to tell us what you're cooking during the show. Mm. And the new one we're trying out, podcast <laughs> drinking, to tell us what you're <laughs> sipping tonight. That's awesome. I think that just started spinning up in the last few episodes, eh? Yeah. Podcast mm -hmm. drinking. That's awesome. And that I think that is a completely uh, crowdsourced mm. uh, hashtag. You, you know, it was it, sometime after Christmas, all the podcast baking just kind of died down yeah <laughs> it's like well how about what we're drinking oh yeah except yeah. that it hasn't because i saw a podcast baking from monkey cakes oh yeah german leave cooking mm. wow good stuff. i don't know what that is but i want it <laughs> <laughs> yeah you do yeah you do all right hey you know what i want chris do tell i want no spoilers news. hashtag geo tour oh. <laughs> <laughs> I want some news, man. This week, in fact, just a couple of days ago, HQ sent out the 2022 year in review. I like these. You know, it's just a bunch of numbers. Some people look at it and go, meh. I'd like to know uh, what's going on in the background in the world, right? Because I know how many caches I found this year. I know how many my friends found. But I don't know. How, do you guys know? before the show, what the average geocacher found this year, their numbers? A geocache. Yes. Uh, the average geocacher found 43 geocaches this year. Hmm. So that tells me not everyone is addicted such as we are. Or I'm maybe embarrassed all for the average geocacher. Maybe they're all Pull your socks up. And they don't have the time. 
<laughs> uh, now, with those 43 geocaches, somehow over 83 million logs were posted. I'm sorry, found logs were posted. And almost 2 million geocachers found at least one geocache. Wow. I feel like the math doesn't add up. <laughs> the math doesn't math there because, you know, there, there's a whole, well, you know, you get people who can find 10,000 in a year and that really skews the numbers. Yeah. Um, August 20th, when we shot for the um, world record, we didn't hit the world record, but we did get the most fines of the year with 60, uh, 640,000 total fines on that day. 600,264, if you want to be particular. Because I think it matters. <laughs> now, that was, the, that was the day they were pushing for the record, right? Yeah. Right. That was Geo Woodstock Day. I think, no. It was the 20th anniversary. 20th anniversary. Plus day. two. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. That's exactly <laughs> what I meant to say. In what valley was Geo Woodstock, Chris? Why, I can tell you. But I'm not going to. <laughs> it, was it, was, it was down in the valley. The valley's so low. So low. There you go. Um, the top five countries with the most fined logs were. Wait. Ah. Uh. Germany, United States, Netherlands, France, and the UK. Canada. Come on, guys. I, I have to admit I'm a little shocked with those. Um, uh, Germany and the U.S. I'm not shocked with to be in the right. top two. Um, I thought Czech Republic would be in there. Ooh, yeah, good point. I did, not, I did not think the Netherlands would be in there. Well, now I want to see the top ten. Yeah, yeah okay. <laughs> How about the top five countries with the most new geocache hides? I like doing this. Guess what? United States and Germany, France, Canada. Yeah, there Yay. we are. Represent. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, you know what? Actually, that's pretty good. So we're not in the top five countries of going and finding things, but we are in the top five countries of placing things. So what does that right. tell you? Mm. There you go. That's awesome. Okay. Um, nearly 70 thousand geocachers hit a geocache and do you think that is also events are included in that i, would I see i see thirteen thousand geocachers hosting an event oh i didn't think there would be wow. more than 13 well uh, there is no. probably more than thirteen thousand events because geocachers tend to hold more than one yeah but uh, but it's not how many events were held it's how many geocachers oh. held it held events yeah. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense then, yeah. Okay. 23,000-ish geocachers hid their first geocache. That's 23,000 new finds to go out and grab. Right. Yeah. And you better go find them in the first couple of months because they're probably not going to last. <laughs> <laughs> that means you get to go find that spot again. There you go. Um, now, here's, here's another part I like. Favorite points. Geocachers awarded, let's say, 3.7 million favorite points that's a lot of favorite points however of oh however here's the the flip side of that the global community of geocachers has 26 and a half million favorite points yet to award hmm. oh so all right so we're still being stingy are we folks yep <laughs> let's let's work tonight. Let's pick one geocache and see if we can get a million favorite points on it. Ooh, there you go. Yeah, and let's not use one of the ones that already has like three hundred favorite. No, points no, no. Let's no. let's pick a new cache. I got a few here. Oh, there, you go. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Let's help out Marcy. Awesome, awesome. Um, <laughs> yeah. So which one? Which one was GSM times two saying was a great stat? The um, I think they all are. They, they, yeah. I I would agree with that particularly that Canada's in the top five countries hiding geocaches. Mm -hmm. But yes, no, that's good. And um, it's great that 23,000 cash people went out and, and hid their first cache. I, I, I joke about finding it quickly because, you know, 
Sometimes. They got to start somewhere. And yeah. who knows, maybe we have a new gadget cacher in that group that exactly. is going to be the next one that we are all talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And and I just on that note, yeah. and I, I know we, we need to get into Marcy's topics here, but <laughs> on that particular note, Chris, um, I recently have found some caches by a new hider out in my neck of the woods here who is experimenting and trying some, you know, mm. non- standard not, hides not, not just a tupperware. Yeah, yeah, yeah. not just a tupperware tucked under some leaves or something and and they're doing a great job so i made sure to give them a favorite point for it oh, oh very nice of i think that's how you encourage somebody's new to the game mm-hmm. who's trying something different and trying to do better and by signing tftc so they can read that and quickly get out and hide more caches because no. nothing encourages people like a tftc yeah right especially <laughs> the new hiders going I'd like to buy a vowel. What does this really <laughs> say? <laughs> I think it's kind of that noise that the Roadrunner makes. Get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, GSM times two was talking about the first hide stat. Ah, okay. 23,000. Yeah, because without hiders, there would be no caches to find. Yeah, that's right. Right? I mean, GSM What's times two. On, on made, that one? Sorry, Chris. Yeah, do, do top what <laughs> but if you if, just to, to go through those numbers again like it was just uh well 69,661 geocachers hid caches hid and of that hid a geo and of that 69,000 23,000 it was their first one mm-hmm. that's interesting to me that's yeah. Yeah, a third wow that's a that's a lot of people a lot of the hides that went out this year were by people hiding their first one so Obviously, HQ has done something well in the past year to encourage people to try and hide a cache. You know, it has to be that uh, the the souvenir, the hider souvenir, it, right? It probably doesn't hurt. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that, that is very interesting. I, I'm a numbers geek, right? I mean, nothing's better than a chart or a graph, but this is as close as I can get. And, um, yeah. I like that almost 2 million geocachers found at least one geocache this year. Yeah, that's right. Now, we don't know the total size of the community, of the geocaching community. But we know that 2 million found at least one. We Mm -hmm. know there's at least 2 million in the community. So So you can say there's 2 million active cachers. (laughs) Cool. Okay, enough with numbers. It's fun with numbers. A one, a two. Uh, As much as we love to count, we also... I should have done the whole thing in the count voice. I missed that opportunity. Uh, The window has passed. However, we could completely switch gears. (laughs) We are. Marcy, number one, uh, and here I go back with numbers, right? Number one, you're one of my favorite guests. And tonight you are absolutely my favorite guest because, you know, you ask questions where, where my hosts over here didn't do anything for me. So I like you. (laughs) Well, I thank you. I like you too. And thank you for having me. Oh, you are always great. (laughs) Now there's some people who may remember you from another job, but you're now in a, different place why don't you tell us a little bit about what you're doing and um even a little bit about your geocaching history if you don't mind certainly so first of all i want to say welcome from Valemount, bc and that's where i live work and play now and absolutely love it it is um if you've never been to Valemount, it's surrounded by three mountain ranges we have the Rockies, the Caribous, and the Monashies. So there's so many things to see and do here. Um, I'm the executive director of Tourism Bailmount, and I have been here since August. Officially moved to the community in September. And what we do is promote the community of Bailmount. So visitor guides, maps, we have a website, and we're always out promoting and letting people know what you can come see and do here. Uh, I started geocaching in 2009, <clears throat> finding a couple of local hides when I was living in Kelowna. 
I then moved to Cache Creek and that's when I learned about geotours and learned a lot more about geocaching. And as many may know or not know, I was working with a Gold Country geocaching uh, geotour and I was the program coordinator there. And then um, moved on to be the executive director and now I am now here in Bailmont, BC and absolutely loving it. I don't have a whole lot of fines. I'm probably at about 600 and something. Uh, a lot of those years I spent hiding the geocaches. So <laughs> yeah, that kept me pretty busy. And then not only hiding them, it was also maintaining them. So mm -hmm. yeah, right. um, the, the great thing about geocaching, um, especially coming to a new community, it is such an awesome way to learn about the community and to find those little places that you, you may not have known about or driven by that sort of thing. So it's right. a great way to get out and explore. Um, my daughter and I have been going out and every chance we get, especially on the weekends, we're out exploring this whole region. And we found quite a few different uh, different types of geocaches and we'll talk a little bit more about that as we go here. Nice. Fantastic. So you, you gave us a, a little bit of a teaser about Vail Mount in the sense of, uh, you know, look for these mountain ranges, but maybe you can uh, help our listeners understand a little more specifically <laughs> where they would find Vail Mount and, and you know, what uh, what's some reasons to come up there besides geocaching? Sure. So Vail Mount is located on Highway 5. We are three hours um, south of Prince George and four hours north of Kamloops. We are in the northernmost part of the Thompson Okanagan, so we are still in that Thompson Okanagan area. We're also considered part of the Caribou, and we're in the Fraser, Fort George, and Columbia Basin regions as well. So we're kind of in the hub of a lot of different areas. And we're an hour and 20 minutes from Jasper, so we're right near the Alberta border. So Mount Robson is one of the places that we promote as well. So things to do here. I've got a couple examples in the background here. We have an amazing um, mountain bike park, just incredible. And then there's also, uh, especially right now with this season, and we've got some new snow today, sledding is really popular here with, with the majority of people that do come to the region. There's also the Chinook salmon that come uh, around August and into September, and that's quite an incredible thing to see. If you've never seen a Chinook salmon, they're, they're quite large. And our viewing deck is at the George uh, Hicks Regional Park, which is right close to the visitor center. It's just a quick little walk. So you can pick up your guides there and then go and check out the salmon if you're here in the fall. You know, Other Marcy, things to be, sorry, yes? I was just going to jump in there because I think that's one of the things that I find almost kind of mind boggling is if you think about that, like the Chinook salmon, they come from the Pacific Ocean yeah. and they have swam up the Fraser River yeah. for spawning up by Vail Mount, like a <laughs> four hour drive from Kamloops, like a, an eight hour drive perhaps from Vancouver. Like, and, and that's a drive, not a swim. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And how do it's... they get a rental car? <laughs> right. <laughs> Oh, no, well, we do have tour buses that come Monday through season. too. So, you know, they may <laughs> hitch a ride on a tour bus. Sure. <laughs> but it's it's incredible. Like when I was exploring the area, and that was one of the things that I found mind boggling too, is how close we are to the Fraser River. And I know the Fraser River from the Fraser Valley and that sort of thing. And, and that region is like looking on the map and seeing how far the river goes. It's just incredible. Um, there's a beautiful book that they sell at the Mount Robson Visitor Center and at the local visitor center as well. And it's about a family of bears, but it also talks about the journey of the salmon. And it's actually was locally produced and, and people helped write this book and do the pictures. It's just quite incredible. Um, but it's, it's really neat to see because it shows, you know, how far we are and how the, the way this, the salmon go. But it's just one of the other... Really cool spots to check out if you're in the area is Rear Guard Falls. Uh, it's just a really quick little walk, um, nice little parking area. It's paved, so it's pretty easy, easily accessible. But you can stand there and you actually see these salmon jump the waterfalls. 
the day wow. that I went down there and a couple of the reasons why we went down there, cause there's probably a geocache or two down there too. So we went to find the geocaches and as we were there, we actually did see some salmon jumping. We also saw a group of uh, people kayaking. They get out at one spot, they can walk around down by the stairs and go at the bottom of the falls and head off down again. And I actually got some video clip of it. And it was, it was pretty incredible. Just the, the variety of activities and um, outdoor sports that people do here is just amazing. This is a very, very active community. Excellent. That's really cool. Um, you you had mentioned in the notes about a rugged trail along the river with great views. Uh, is that the same location you're talking about? or No. <laughs> okay. That's a different one. There's a place, it's called the Old a Salmon Spawning Channel. And it's in... It's in this book, and it's also online, of course. And it's an incredible little um, area. And actually, my neighbor next door to me here hit that geocache. He said, have you gone to check out this geocache? And I'm like, no, I haven't. He goes, well, you need to go in there. So I did. Um, went down there with our dog, Ella, <clears throat> who, who's a very avid um, geocacher as well. Anyway, we're hiking along and you're right near the river edge. So of course you gotta be very careful. And I had Ella on a leash and she decided to take a drink of water and kind of went in for a swim. And I was glad she had her harness on her. So we both learned, you know, a very valuable lesson there. And I always have a pack on with a rope and that sort of thing, because you gotta be prepared. And we're right in bear country as well. And I was actually expecting to see, cause it was pretty remote where we are, but. It was just so beautiful there. The Fraser River's there, this little creek connects on, and you can see all these salmon just right next to you, basically. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. So a, a year-round destination, um, cool. clearly, yeah. with uh, lots of outdoors, so sledding. Uh, you talked about sledding, so maybe just to make sure people understand, we're not talking about like sliding down the neighborhood hill. We're talking about actually powered sledding. <laughs> That's right. Snowmobiling. There's snowmobiling. But the other cool thing too, um, the bike park, that's mm -hmm. called Five Mile Hill. So there's lots of trails there as well. But in the winter, there's actually um, the road you can actually toboggan on it as well. So that's accessible and people ski here too. So there's, there's lots of downhill skiing as well, but yeah, there's some great areas for snowmobiling too. And all that you can access on our website as well. Perfect. Um, maybe, uh, maybe I'll work on trying to bring this up while we keep talking here, but uh, uh, CRS 98 asked a great question, which is to share a map for those who can't, quite grasp where Veil Mount is. So I will oh. I will I will pull that together and get that up on the screen if you guys want to keep talking. Absolutely. Um on our website as well at visit veilmount.ca we do have maps on there. We do also have um wonderful uh hiking trails as well. So this map has the hiking trails and the mountain biking trails too. Oh nice. Yeah. And it comes in two sizes. There's a large size and then a nice convenient pocket hmm. size, which I, I quite like. My camera's over there. Yeah. There we go. There's there's Veil Mount. There you go. Yep. Oh, it's it's tough to see. Um, we can see Cam Loops right here, Kelowna mm -hmm. down here. And then uh, let's see. Clear so water, Vancouver. So you know, major cities that people are more probably familiar mm -hmm. with, Vancouver. And Abbotsford are like right down there by the, the, the big blue chunk of water. That's the Salish Sea. Um, so if folks came up for Geo Woodstock, you would have been right down there on the bottom uh, left-hand corner of the map. And so this is this is a, a trip for sure to get yeah. up there. Mm -hmm. But um, it's an adventure. And worth making the adventure. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. And it's a beautiful drive as well. Um, and... Vailmont is so accessible um, with how to get here, like driving on, driving on the Yellowhead Highway 5 or coming down from Highway 16 if you're going through uh, Prince George. Marcy, if Keats wanted to come there by train, could he do that? Yes, he could. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> there's, there's actually a train station. <laughs> there's actually a... Um, so the, 
our museum is the old train station and it's really cool. It's really neat to check that out. But right across there is the railway track, which is on Main Street. And there is a spot there that people can take the train and actually head up to Jasper and down. Very cool. So is that the, um, that, uh, what's that called? The, the fancy, crazy, expensive train that goes through BC. Is that the same one that goes, does that go to Vail Mount? No, the Rocky Mountaineer. The Rocky Mountaineer. That's what I was saying. Yeah. No. So our line is CN. Oh, and okay. I believe that one's on the CP. Cool. All okay. right. I have to check my facts on that, but yeah. <clears throat> Very cool. All right. So, um, Lots of helpful information there. Yeah. Um, BC Rock Caller says that uh, they drove through Vail Mount a few times while living in Jasper. Well, that would make sense. Yeah. Um, and they've also camped and cached there back in 2011. Very cool. Awesome. I was teasing uh, Rory earlier with our geocoin that we have. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think I think he has a bit of a reputation for uh, enjoying geocoins. So. Yes, <laughs> he actually gave me one of his a while ago, and I, nice. I still have it. Yeah, wonderful. We can't talk about the geocoin just yet. No, almost. Okay. <laughs> it's it's oh. coming up. <laughs> so, okay, where do we want to go next here? Well, I'm guessing she's lived there since September. And geocache found some. Have you generated any funny stories while you lived there? Yeah. So <laughs> one of the things here, <laughs> there's a lot of berries. There's blueberries and there's huckleberries. Yeah. Um, and if you're local, you know where they are. But and it's one of those things you don't really want to share with people because it's kind of <laughs> like your your spot, right? Secret stash. So, yeah. <laughs> I went out with. Uh, I'll call her adventure dog, our adventure dog, and I'm teaching her how to smell out geocaches. But she came up with a really neat trick. She absolutely loves blueberries. So we were going to this geocache, and it was actually a really cool location. And again, it's it's in this book. As we got there, it's just sand, like this beautiful, really fine sand that just sparkles. It's just, it's just really cool. And I'm looking and I'm seeing all these little low bushes and I'm like, Hmm, kind of think those might be blueberries. I'm not quite sure. So we get out we're hiking. I have all my geocaching gear, <clears throat> except for one thing that I didn't have, which I now pack. So we're cruising along and all of a sudden Ella stops and she just starts chewing on this bush and she's eating these blueberries. So I ended up having to dump a container so that I could pick some blueberries. So now we know where that is. So <laughs> kind of gave nice. it away a little bit. It's, it's in the book. <laughs> well, show that on, on screen. Hold, hold that book up. What, what is this? This is the Historic Heights Hikes yeah. uh, Geocache Edition in the, of the Vail Mount Museum. Nice. Yes. With a collectible coin. Ooh, we'll show that now. There you go. That is and a good looking. Here's point. the other side, and there's a train station. Not to be confused with the Yellowstone train station. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a nice design. And so on the other side of it, there it was a, a kind of a seasonal summertime, mm -hmm. and yeah. So that's our logo. So it's oh, okay. the a s snowflake and the sun. And you'll see that logo everywhere you go in Vailma. And then the train station museum on the back. Very nice. And the other cool thing, uh, when you go to that museum, they're open May to September. Um, mm -hmm. Those books are for sale there and also at the visitor center. And they're $6. Um, the cool thing there is there's also a um, lookout from like forestry. So there's an actual lookout that's that's hiding on the, well, not hiding on the spot. It's there, but there's something, there's something else there that you need to go find. That's all I'm going to oh. say. Oh, <laughs> well, now that you've shown a coin with a train station on it, Subway Mark says, oh boy, a train station must have coin. Must have. <laughs> yes, you'll be getting a visit from Subway Mark. There you go. Yes. I um, think in the very awesome. near future. And GSM times two asked, um, how do they get the book and coin? And you, you were saying it, it's available for purchase from the museum. 
Yeah, it's available for purchase from the museum. Again, they're open May to September, but it's also available at the visitor center. And our visitor center is open year round, Monday to Friday. Monday to Friday. Ah, okay. So yeah. that's that's one of the ones I got to say. This is one of the things that drives me nuts when I am traveling is visitor centers aren't open on the weekends. Yeah, yes. they are in the summer. Um, but okay. Yeah, they're, they're usually Monday to Friday as well. Okay. Um, I'm here Monday to Friday, but I also have a cell phone that I check too. So if people are in the area, they can let oh, me know. So why don't you just say, say, tell us, everybody, that cell phone number <laughs> so we can call you on the weekends and let you know where we are. No, don't do no. that. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's move. on the website. <laughs> so um, you go to the History Museum. You start this tour and you can earn a coin. What do you have to do to earn the coin? I mean, Subway Mark is already drooling over a train station coin. They're so good there. So it's it's really based on the honor system. Um, you know, some books have stickers or stamps or that sort of thing. And this one, you go out and find some of them, and then you go back to that uh, train station, and then you can get your coin there. So you collect code words out of the caches or something like that? and. No, you don't even no, need just to log them. You just, just need to log them. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Um, what I've been doing is I always write down the date in which I found them as well, too. And again, it is based on the honor system as well. So mm -hmm. Nice. But then yeah. it's, if you're putting the date and, and the notes in the book, then it's a bit of a journal of your adventure, too. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. That's why <laughs> mine always get thrashed. I mean, it's got mud. It's got blueberry stains and all kinds <laughs> of things on it because it's always in my bag. Nice. Yeah. You're really selling me on the blueberry aspect there. That sounds, yeah. that oh, they're sounds so like... good. They're really <laughs> shiny and they are so good. Um, there's also wild raspberries around. Oh. Too. I haven't found the huckleberries yet. Apparently I need to go up further. So that'll be, that'll be next year. I gotta, I gotta get our adventure dog a few huckleberries first so that she knows what they smell like so she can. <laughs> <laughs> and I always know now pack an extra container. <laughs> Very cool. Now, Marcy, we were talking earlier about some, some, just a couple of the activities that uh, folks can do when they come and visit in Vail Mount. But um, you've got uh, a bit of a list of some summer activities for us as well that um, people can enjoy if they plan a trip this summer up to Vail Mount. Uh, can you share some of those? I sure can. So there are so many beautiful things to see and do here. And one of the places that I really enjoy going and I almost go there on a daily basis because it's just minutes from the downtown core where I'm at and that's Cranberry Marsh Trail. Um, it's a beautiful trail that you can take. It's fairly flat. There is part of it that is accessible for wheelchairs, strollers, that sort of thing and it's a boardwalk section. Um, in the summer you can see so many dragonflies in there and there's always a lot of birds in there too. Neat. I've seen sandhill cranes, um, a variety of geese, ducks, that sort of thing. And I've also heard that there's been pelicans from time to time in there as well. And occasionally people see moose in there as well. It's quite a large marsh. Um, there's one part that's accessible on what's called McCurdy Road. And down there, there's a, a kind of a launch area. So you can actually go in with a kayak or a canoe and you can actually paddle around the marsh as well, which is quite extraordinary. You're going to be you know, seeing all these different things. Highly recommend for those that are just visiting and never been here before, make sure you mark your trail like GPS or something so that you know where you're going and how to get back to where your vehicle is. I think we've all learned once or twice, maybe the hard way. <laughs> Bushwhacking is not a cool thing in the marsh. Um, <laughs> the trails are beautiful. And the other cool thing is that there's two viewing decks that you walk up about three or four flights of stairs and you're seeing a panoramic view of the marsh and the three mountain ranges as well. It's just absolutely wow. gorgeous. Um, another area that's really close to the downtown core is called Swift Creek Trail. And that's a beautiful trail that you follow it. Yes, yeah, so I'm right along Swift Creek. And it does a loop around and it goes right into that, that mountain bike park too. So all these, a lot of these trails do connect. And we do have a number of trail maps in the area as well. Um, some of the other things there are, of course, I mentioned about the mountain bike park. 
They have a variety of trails, so it goes from novice, intermediate into advanced as well. Very popular in the summer. Um, the really cool thing about the bike park is it's really inspired a lot of local businesses as well. So we have some newer businesses to the area because of that activity as well. So uh, the people that are involved with that, they're called BARDA, the Vail Mount um, Association of Recreation Development. They've done an incredible job of promoting and developing that area with them and their board of directors and a group of volunteers as well. So it's just amazing what's happened and just start off with a couple of trails. And we've actually got video on our YouTube channel as well that people can watch and learn more about that as, as well. Um, other things that are, you know, great to do in the area, just even one of the really cool things that we've got this really cool playground that's right downtown. And one of the things that's really neat is that there's a biking trail. It's fairly flat, so it's, it's pretty accessible. But in that bike park, there's actually a bike station. So if you have a flat tire mm -hmm. or you need to tighten something up, it's, it's right there for you to, to do that as well. And of course, there's, um, for people with, who have, uh, need to charge up their car, there's those stations there as well. So, um, winter activities too, really quickly. We also have a recreation center. So there's public skating, um, at times when it's accessible and it's been cleared out. People do go ice skating on the Cranberry Marsh Trail as well. But of course, you got to be, you know, make sure that the ice is good and that it has been prepped for that. Yes. Fun. Oh, wow. Hi. Marcy, you were mentioning a lot of the uh, the wildlife uh, in the marsh area and, and the great trails and everything. I'm assuming there's going to be some caches around that area. But you were, you were also mentioning um, uh, things that you've learned that you need to make sure you take when you go hiking. Um, I'm hearing marsh area and summer, and I'm thinking, is bug spray one of the things that people should bring with them? Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> the reason why there's a lot of dragonflies is because there's a lot of mosquitoes. And, and yeah, you, you will find that there are some mosquitoes as well. I mean, I was walking through there. Um, the, the neat thing about that marsh area is that you're going into like an open area and then you're going into the woods too. And it just, it's so diverse through that that area so there are parts where like i'd walk through with a hoodie on and that sort of thing and yeah, you know, make sure i had bug spray with me and and uh yeah take care of those kind of things and there are yes there are a few geocaches in that area too um one is real well they're they're all really cool but there's an old um foundation from a home that used to be in there mm -hmm. and you'll read about some of that history in this in this book as well but even when you get there there's some signage about it too so that's one that uh, that adventure dog did help me find because i i was on the wrong trail she found it for me oh so there's a blueberry bush beside it <laughs> not that time <laughs> and it's funny where you start seeing blueberry bushes because like i said she's got a nose for that kind of thing now too so yeah oh, okay so you mentioned uh hiking biking uh bc rock Collier rock crawler wants to know is there atv riding there there is actually so a couple of cool things there's canoe mountain which you do see from um the cranberry marsh trail and it's one of the major mountains when you're driving first into uh vale mount from the south side and people do um drive up there with atvs there has been an atv a, pardon me an atv event that has happened in the region as well. So that's a great area. There's also um, a rental shop too, where you can rent or go on uh, ATV tours as well. They also rent snowmobiles too, where people need to know that as well. So do check out our website because it does have a list, a full list of all the events and activities and local businesses as well. Oh, um, nice. Those that Sorry, just um, one second. <laughs> I just had a thought. But for those people that really enjoy um, those kind of activities that are bringing people that, you know, may not quite enjoy those type of activities, we do have a little bit of an urban area as well, so to speak. I mean, we are a rural community, but we do have an art gallery that has some beautiful um, creations from local artisans. Um, we also have an amazing bakery um we have coffee shops we have restaurants we have sushi pizza all those kind of things too just in some really beautiful gift shops as well so there's a lot of things to do for those that really enjoy shopping and just kind of wandering around mm -hmm. 
we also have um, an art walk in the community too, mm. and brochures can be picked up at the library for that, which is right next to the train station. Hey, those can be a lot of fun, the art walks, train, all that sounds amazing. Of course, you mentioned food, which you had oh. me at food because I like to eat. Food. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hear the, the train food. Station. And for those that like to sip, there's Three Ranges Brewery as well. Okay. So I know eight hours drive-ish from, from Vancouver. So if you're going to do this in a day trip, you're not going to get a lot of time to cash and see the sites. Are there places to stay or do we just need to day trip up and back? No, Stay, there are have places, some food, all that. Yeah, there are places to stay. We do have a list on our website of hotels and motels. And there are some camping areas as well. So there is a list. Oh. Um, and if you're wanting to know more about the accommodations, I do recommend uh, contacting the visitor center as well. So, Fantastic. Um, Ryling says <laughs> that uh, Canoe Mountain is the highest place you can drive a 4x4 four four in Canada, I believe. You can drive to about... 2,600 meter elevation. And yes, there are two geocaches near the summit. Of course there are. But of course. <laughs> that will be our next destination. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And There's quite a bit of snow up there right now, though. Subway marks as a train station, geocaching, and a brewery. Trip planning has begun. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably even Absolutely. places for Dylan up there. Um, yeah. yes. maybe, maybe that's a good segue, um, Subway Mark's um, planning that he shared. Um, Marcy, if people wanted to plan a trip up to Vail Mountain now, you know, we flashed a map up on the screen, but is there, uh, are there any online tools or anything that people could use to help plan their trip to Vail Mount? Visit veilmount.ca. There we go. <laughs> there we go. Visit Vail Mount. So everybody can see it. Dot .ca okay visit bailmount.ca all right yeah we got that in the show notes now and on the screen thank you right that's awesome and when you go on to that you'll see um, a lot of the partnerships that we have as well to connect to as well one of them the t-shirt i'm writing or wearing <laughs> writing wearing this t-shirt and it's ridevailmount.com as well mm. and that's where you're going to find a lot of information about the mountain biking and the sledding and right now they they're keeping up to date with the grooming schedule as well so people know you know what trails have been groomed for going snowmobiling awesome. now I know you said towards the beginning, there's places to rent, right? So we can rent bicycles. We could rent snow machines if yes. we wanted to this time of year. Yes, yes oh, that's correct. Love yeah. that. Yeah. And kayaks? Not much bicycles right now, but definitely. Uh, well, not, not right at the moment, but yeah. yeah. During the summer. That's correct. Yeah. What about uh, if people wanted to rent boats, kayaks, canoes? Uh, not locally that I'm aware of. Um, I know that further down the road, there are places. So business and opportunity if someone wants to open a business in Vail Mount. Yes. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. There's somebody that's working on that in Clearwater, actually. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which is only two hours away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you know, sorry, it just, it makes me laugh because it's, it's one of those things that when my relatives in Germany, when I'm talking to them and I'll say something like, oh, that's just a four hour drive. They're like four hour drive. I cross two countries in four hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right. <laughs> we don't often leave a state in four hours. Right. right? <laughs> so, yeah, it's all perspective. Yeah. I wanted to go back to the the uh, kayak rental because right down by me at the waterfront, there's uh, a small business that popped up. This guy owns a bus. He loads kayaks in the bus, drives down to the waterfront, rents them for the day, you know, pulls them back in and goes home like, that would be great to take mm -hmm. that and start traveling up and down and, you know, being able to rent kayaks wherever you are and, and change your location on a regular basis. There's so many entrepreneurs in this community too. So with the bike park, what one um, company has developed is called Peak Shuttles and they actually shuttle you up to the top of the bike mountain park too or to the oh, stage. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So there's been so many businesses that have grown because of that as well. So it's, it's really neat to see that. 
That's excellent. I, I just love hearing about these communities in Northern BC and, 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 and such that, you know, outside of the Metro Vancouver Fraser Valley area where the tourism economy is, is growing actively and there's cool outdoor, interesting stuff to go mm -hmm. and do. And, and I really appreciate that you've been able to come in and share about Vail Mount from that perspective. Um, Subway Mark had a great question. Um, how dog friendly is Vail Mount? It's actually very dog friendly and it's, it's kind of neat because, um, I was sharing a couple of reels on our social media story. And right after that, one of the local hotels posted about how dogs are welcome there. And then somebody mentioned about taking your dog sledding and that sort of thing. So dogs are definitely welcome in the area. There's some trails. Um, there's a new multi-use trail that's in Jackman trail, which is a BC provincial park it's about 15 minutes up the road they've developed a, it's across there's groomed cross-country um ski trails there but now they also have a multi-use trail and you can go snowshoeing and whatnot with your dog but of course your dog needs to be on a leash um, and that is a really cool place to check out year round it's the trails are sand in the summer and there's lichen um, and there's history um, signs and information about the lichen and how caribou, that's what they eat. So there are caribou in this region too. So for those that are coming to go sledding, that's something they need to be aware of because caribou are protected and there are areas that they cannot access because of that protection. So always know before you go and check out, you know, the websites as well to find out um, about the the area and especially at this time of year too you also want to check out avalanche canada right mm. yeah yeah sandra will be on again i'm sure some point to tell us more about <laughs> yes i actually but, um, um popped in on to one of her webinars too to get a refresher about uh traveling safely at this time of year as well yeah it's awesome um a question from gsm times too are there grizzly bears in the mountains or, or anywhere near Vail Mount? There certainly are grizzly bears. Um, actually, in one of the trail maps I was reading, doing some browsing on it, and Mount Trudeau, there's known to be grizzly bears up there. So they are around the area. Um, I was out cross-country skiing on the weekend at Camp Creek Trail, which is another great trail where you can take your dog. Um, and it's beautiful there, too. There's actually a cabin that you can phone ahead and, and stay at. Um, reserve oh, it's, it's just That's gorgeous cool. yeah and it's about a two 2.4 kilometer truck around anyway as we were cruising along we looked and there was moose tracks right on the trail going along so not sure wow. what time it went through but yeah it certainly did so you do have to be um aware of wildlife here from the teeny tiny little things to to the great big animals <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, well, some more feedback from GSM Times too is uh, very active in the chat tonight, but he uh, commends the cash page is very easy to navigate. So well done. So some constructive feed or some positive feedback there. Yeah. Awesome. I will pass that along. A lot of work was put into that um, with the, with the book and the stories and the amount of volunteers that worked on that is, is pretty awesome. Excellent. Marcy, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Now, if our listeners wanted to connect with you, ask some questions, you know, we got to get the number for that cabin, right? Yeah. How would we get a hold of you? So, again, you can contact uh, me through the website at visitvailmount.ca. And then we're also on social media under Tourism Vailmount. So you want to follow us, too, and see what we're up to. We have an event coming up on February the 19th, which is the family day long weekend. And it's Winterfest 2023. So you can message me um, via social media as well. Nice, nice. Excellent. Thank you so much. Listeners, we hope you enjoyed this episode of Caching in the Northwest. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And thanks for tuning in everybody and i want to take a moment to thank uh, land sharks that's l-e-n-d-s-h-a-r-k-z dot c-a and gold country geotourism that's goldcountry.ca 
Uh, they are our corporate Denali level sponsors. So check them out. Land Sharks is the outdoor adventure and geocaching store. Check them out online. They're shipping those orders daily. And for absolutely amazing geocaching adventures, uh, on your way up to Vail Mount, stop by in Gold Country and do a little caching there as well. All right. Uh, we want to thank our faithful Denali level supporters, Land Sharks, Gold Country Geotourism, Team Squirrel, Groovy Owl, and Cashly, the geocaching app. And folks, if you want to know more about supporting this show or, hey, or, uh, earning a, a geocoin, a nice shiny geocoin, <laughs> click that Patreon link on the cachingnw.com a website. Like Acrodoc did. And Limax. And Jcar. And Genies. Skyhawker. Taking the train to the podcast tonight, Keats94. Kennel Barb. Fairwood West. Our favorite kitchen appliance, the LG 9000. Sprouter. Coors Gut. I think a fan of earth caching, you talks to rocks. Who isn't really? I'm a fan of you talks to rocks and of Dora Moore. And Donners. Active in the chat tonight, CRS 98. Antaeus. MC3 Cats. Someone I haven't seen around for a little while, yeah. but boy, do we ever like counting them down. Ari, five, four, three, two, one. Kitty Quest. B. Pendragon. Al Robrick. Trexer. GeoNav Pro. Just finding our way. Gia Caches. Kid Vegas 19. Ah, asking about dog friendly places with trains. Subway Mark. Mm -hmm. That entirely sums him up right there. <laughs> kind of does, doesn't it? <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> M nerve. Let's see. Peach of many places. Washington <laughs> official in Nevada tonight. Who knows where it'll be next week? Uh, and Sege Hove. Very active in the chat. Uh, GSM times two. That one. Yeah. How about <laughs> Boomer365? How about log work? How about you, Dak? The Camp Clan. A uh, new supporter of the podcast and one of my favorite places to visit as well, Whidbey Island Gal. I mean, not visiting her. I haven't <laughs> met her, but visiting the <laughs> island upon which she lives. Boy, uh, there, there's room for the other foot. Hold on. Yep, yep. <laughs> Making it awkward, Kev MacD. <laughs> uh, just going to thank Green Words. Uh, and uh, I think she's left the show tonight, but celebrating a birthday this past weekend, Seabeck Tribe. Tick magnet. As always, uh, terrible lunch. Wonderful geocacher. Gas station tuna. And great geocache creators, Team Noltex. Lagman. The Arnott family. And last but not least, one of our favorite spilly drinkers, Wet Coaster. That's right. <laughs> what a great list. It just keeps growing and growing, and we thank each mm -hmm. and every one of them. And all of you out there listening, and... A special thanks to Marcy for joining us from a new location. Boy, we started teasing her last time, and then she picked up and moved. <laughs> so I don't know if it was us. Where's she going to be next week? Yeah. Yeah. This little game, where's Marcy? And I'm like, oh, I'll get you. <laughs> <laughs> Figure this out. <laughs> oh, one more time. I want to throw out. What's that? Marcy always wins at that game. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uncle, we you win. Hey, one more time, if people wanted to reach and get in touch with you, they finally found their pen. Where is that again? Visit veilmount.ca. Perfect. And folks, thank you for taking the time to listen to this episode of Caching in the Northwest. Your support helps keep the quality shows coming. If you like the show, click the Patreon link on the cachingnw.com website. And if you didn't like the show, let us know what you want to talk about, because we'll bring Marcy on again, because everybody likes to talk to Marcy. We'll do it. <laughs> In either case, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and more. Subscribe and give us a review. Now, if you were in a restaurant, you would tip. If you were in a live audience, you would clap. But since you're on a podcast, leave us a free, fast, fabulous, fantastic five-star review. And, of course, you can call 253-693-TFTC and leave us a comment, ask a question, or carpool with us any time of the day or night. And, of course, you can email us at feedback at cashingnw.com. Join us every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Pacific for a live show. And as we proved tonight, even livelier mm -hmm. chat. 
This show is produced by Chris Umpenauer, Jim Powitz, Jay Kennedy. It's licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. Copyright 2023 by Chris Umpenauer. Folks, we ask you to stay tuned for The After Show. Oh, you'd think I had my caffeine tonight, right? I did. Well done. <laughs> oh. Well, you mentioned some people you hadn't seen in a long time. I got to see many of those patrons at the uh, Bremerton Cash Machine 20th anniversary mm. event. Nice. How'd that uh, go? Very well. It went very well. Very well attended. Awesome. So, so let's see. Um, CRS 98 is podcast drinking and old fashioned, just like me. Nice. That's, nice. that's a nice drink. I saw him this weekend. Um, CRS 98, your old fashioned, was it uh, bourbon or whiskey? Oh, we'll have to find out. Yeah. Starcasher is uh, drinking chocolate milk, which excellent. I learned is excellent after sports right so my son was swimming and they said one of the best recovery drinks is chocolate milk really good for time travel too is it now (laughs) (laughs) men in black three i think the uh what was it oh right yeah yes Uh, GSM times two was uh, his podcast drinking was pink lemonade crystal light. Now he says pretty boring, but I don't know. That's, that's pretty flashy. If you ask me, I know mine's just plain water. I don't have any flavor into it. So don't call (laughs) it boring. Mine was just hot water as well. So mine's water with lemon. Nice. Uh, I did. The black black cherry sparkling water tonight. I'm all fancy, but I got the fancy cap. So yeah, there you go. Now, Now, Marcy, you've been showing off that cup. Now, is that something people can buy when they come up to the? Yes, that's also available at the visitor center. Nice. Do you the have visitor all center cap? actually has quite a bit of swag. Yeah. And if people were to visit or um, go to the ridevalemount.com website, they actually have some pretty cool swag, too, including the T-shirt that I'm wearing. Nice. So what you're saying is you can pack extremely light to go up to Vail Mount, buy everything you need there. Pretty much, yeah. Okay. There's, rent your there's bikes, rent your snowmobiles, whatever you need, and then, you know, come back home and say, wow, what a vacation. What a vacation. What a trip. I think I heard her say you can buy the stuff. I think I heard her say you can buy the shirt right off her back there. So. Ah. Well, one like it. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. You said this shirt, so I just want to make sure. The shirt like the one I'm wearing. Okay, okay. Oh. Cliff, fair enough. <laughs> you have me at wit's end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think we missed one from Wet's Coaster, Wet Coaster that says, uh, stayed in Vail Mount with my daughter when we drove from Edmonton. Uh, preparing to move back to Surrey after working up there. Hmm. Nice. Ah. Well, there you there go. You I think go. that I think Vail Mount would have been a nice uh, a nice place to stop if you're coming yeah. from Edmonton. Mm-hmm. Not just logistically, but a nice change of scenery. <laughs> <laughs> Once you uh, hit West those Coast- mountains, it's just beautiful. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so nice. Wet Coaster says our tickets are booked for our flight to England, so we can oh, go wow. caching. On Guernsey. Nice. That's a UK channel island. Very cool. And GSM Times 2 says, I got to adopt a legacy cache that was set in February 2001. That's cool. And you made a three-minute video about it. If you want to go watch it. Cool. There you go. Very cool. Yeah, we've got a a few uh, YouTubers who uh, regularly... Um, watch the the podcast here and contribute in the chat. So yeah, go and support all of them. Go watch mm-hmm. their videos and give them a thumbs up if you enjoy their video and subscribe. Okay, one more thing. Oh, I've got an event coming up for my four thousands find. That's oh. going to be next Sunday right here in the city of Tacoma. That's a GC. Can you believe we're to GCAs now? You remember when it was GC eight? GC9. Now we're to GCA uh, 3Q2Y. So GC Alpha 3 Quebec 2 Yankee. 
Mark it on your calendars. Make plans to go celebrate. Casey needed to know their um, land monkey. It's rye whiskey, bullet rye, to be specific. I just saw that. Yeah, no, <laughs> That's yeah. very specific. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, CRS98. <laughs> All right, folks, thank you so much. And until next week, get out and get caching in Vailmont and go. the Northwest. <laughs>